Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial by LearnPythonTutorial.com and today we're going to build a program. The last two days we built programs where we converted temperatures. That's great, but the unfortunate part is our users would have to open two different programs to convert these temperatures. Why not give the user a choice in converting the temperature? So let's build a program where our user decides that they want to convert to Celsius or to Fahrenheit. Um, so let's do that. First, I want to open the text editor. I use Sublime Text. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command S to save this. And I'm going to save it on my desktop. And we're going to call it UsersTemp.py. All right. And we're going to make a print statement, just like we did in the other ones. We're going to welcome our user. And we're going to say, welcome to our temp conversion program. Easy enough, right? Uh, I think so. Now, I didn't do temperature. I'm trying to cut down on the video length here so you guys can learn a little bit more. And it's going to get confusing because I'm going to make a variable called temp. Um, here we're going to put the input for the user to let us know how they want to convert their um, temperature. So what we want to do is ask the user for a... Um, temperature they want to convert to. So what temp would you like to convert to? Celsius or Fahrenheit. I have such a hard time spelling that word. Fahrenheit. It's great and I always give a space. So the user when they they're going to type in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Let's put type Celsius or Fahrenheit. Now we need to get the user's uh, temperature they're going to input. So let's go users temp. And this is kind of similar to what we did before. We're first going to do a floating point number. So we're going to convert to a float input. What is your Attempt to be converted. And so we're going to ask what is our temperature to be converted. Now we're going to do something new. Something we haven't done in any of the previous tutorials. We're going to do an if statement. So let me type the first line here. If temp is equal equal to Celsius. Then so if temp is equal to Celsius, then do what's under Celsius, under this um, statement. So we're going to say cell equals. Now this is where we do our conversion to Celsius. Round, we did this in the other one, user temp, oops, users temp minus 32 times, uh, oops, that doesn't look right, sorry. Since we need user temp to be minus first, we gotta make sure that's in parentheses. And we're gonna times that by uh, five divided by nine. Then we're gonna put a comma because we want one number after the decimal and put the parentheses to close out round. So what happened here? We made a variable and we're, we're gonna round the users in the, the uh, number that we get from this equation and we take the user's input from up here and put it here and we're going to minus it by 32 then we're going to times it by 5 divide it by 9 and the 1 goes with round and it's going to return one number at the decimal cool now we're going to do print we're going to do the print statement to return this to the user your temp in Celsius is now we're going to do curly break uh, braces for the format do format um, parentheses and we're going to do cell because we need this number from this variable all right so we do that now we need to do an else elif else if if you're from another programming language and if we do elif temp is equal equal to Fahrenheit then we're going to do this so when a 
user puts in their temp here, they're going to say either Celsius or Fahrenheit. All right. And if they uh, say Celsius, then it will run this code right here. If they say Fahrenheit, then it will skip this code and go to this code and run the code we're going to put it under that. So we're going to do FAH for our variable for this conversion. We're going to do round, parentheses, users, temp, times 9, divided by 5, plus 32, comma, we want to return 1 point after the decimal. Now, the difference between these two is we need to run this program first, or this equation first. This needs to run first because we're minusing 32 from the number before we can run the rest of the equation. In this case, multiplication always comes first, so user temp will get multiplied, then divide it, then add it. So it goes multiplication first, then division, then um, add 32. So it's left to right. Now we gotta give a print statement for this. Print your temp in Fahrenheit is, and then curly braces, we're gonna format it, format, and we're gonna do fa for our variable up here, put that in that print statement, and then we'll do an else. And the else is if the user doesn't enter Celsius or Fahrenheit, then it's gonna run another program or another piece of code and we're going to print a statement and say whoops something went wrong so here's our program we're going to allow the user to choose if they want to uh, convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius and this is the two programs we did prior to this it's just built on that making it a better program all right so let's go ahead and run this. I'll save it. Ignore that. Uh, Control D to get out of my Python interpreter. And now we're going to do Python. Oops. Python 3. And then what the heck do we name it? Users temp. Users temp.py. Hit the term. It's going to run it. Hopefully I didn't break anything. So it says type Celsius or Fahrenheit. So I'll do Celsius, hit return. What is your temp to be converted? We'll say 67. Oh, 19.4 in Celsius. Pretty cool, right? Let's run that again and try it out. Always test your programs after you build it. If you run it once and say, oh, it works, you never know. Let's see, your temperature to be converted is 23. Oh, 73.4. Pretty cool. All right, let's try to break it. Always want to try to break a program and see where it's going to break. Trust me on that. Uh, I'm going to do Celsius, Celsius without a capital. Hit return. And it still works. All right. Let's do 67. Oh, something went wrong. Why did it still run the program and not stop it here? Well, that's pretty simple to explain here. What we did was the program always runs from top to bottom. So we did a print statement, then we asked for the user's input, and then um, we asked them for the temperature, and then the program runs. Well, we used a lowercase c for Celsius. So, nope, that's not equal because that's an uppercase c. We'll do the next one. Nope, that's Fahrenheit. That has nothing to do with Celsius. And it goes to the next one. It says print, something went wrong. So our program broke with that. Celsius. Now, hold on a second. Sorry about that. I had to do something real quick. So, um, and I paused the video. So it looked like I was gone for three seconds. I was actually gone for like five minutes. Um, sorry. So we broke it. We we made we made this program not work. Now, as a programmer, you sometimes got to think outside the box, outside your mind, because to me, this program will always work. It's going to work perfectly. Well. First thing we need to think of is Celsius. How many users actually hit the shift key to make a capital? You never know. Users are dumb sometimes. Even though I said type it like this, doesn't mean they're going to type it like that. All right. So there's some safeguards we can add into this program. 
Now, this ain't the world's greatest program, but in my mind, when we run this, if the user types in a number up here and it comes back as um, or not a number, I'm sorry, a word, and it, fa it should fail right here at this line, okay? Instead of going and asking the user for the temperature, and I go, whoops, something's wrong. Because in my mind, it looks like, ah, oh, something's wrong with the temperature when I entered it. But technically, this runs first, this runs second, and then we go to the if statement. So in the next video, we're going to upgrade this software, or this, this program here. So in the next video with our program, we're going to go ahead and upgrade this one. We're going to make it better. We're going to make it even better. So um, if you have any questions, leave a comment on YouTube or on our website at learnpythontutorial.com. And uh, be sure to check out our video tomorrow. I'll show you how we can improve this program. And this is something you should always do in your programming career is after you build a program, you should actually sit there and think about how you can improve it. Because believe me, users are dumb and they will find a way to break things. And if you're out there uh, constantly troubleshooting your program with users, you'll never get any great programs out there. So trust me, you always want to try to improve it and try to uh, dumb-proof it or idiot-proof your program so users won't break it like I just broke mine. So uh, we'll see you in the next one. We'll improve on this one and try to make it idiot-proof. See you then.